Um, hello. Hello. So, um, what have you been up to since Eurovision? Ooh, a lot of things. Writing, like, constantly. It's just like a never-ending thing. You know, you never know when you're going to write, um, you know, the next hit or whatever. It's not necessarily necessarily the first, you know, ten songs you write. So, I'm always writing and playing lots of guitar and um, what else. Yeah, I've been writing a bit for other artists as well. Um, for the Eurovision, too, you know, as a songwriter and... Um, playing gigs and yeah, just you know, finding myself as an artist and my own sound. Um, cause it was you know I was so young back then in the Eurovision. I was like 19, 20 years old. So sometimes it it takes time to find yourself as an artist. Yeah, and uh, about um, you helped writing a song for Lucy Jones in mm -hmm. Eurovision 2017 for the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. How was that for you? Like in this, as an experience. Uh, it was uh, really, really good. I uh, wrote it in Copenhagen last fall, where I was invited for uh, a, a writing camp, writing for the UK uh, entry. And uh, yeah, it got picked out and sent it in, and um, then it won. So that was pretty great. And I went to Kiev to promote it there, together with, with Lucy, and it was a great experience. Um, so... You talked about also how you're finding yourself, and I've heard about that you are making a new single or a new song or a new album. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what will it be about? Well, I'm making um, an EP or a mini album, I guess you could call it. Um, there's six songs and a bonus track, so seven songs, and um, I get help from Pledge Music to you know, for finan financial like support so people can actually pre-order my EP and in that way support, uh, you know, finishing finishing my, my, my new music. And um, yeah, I think there's some pretty strong singles there too. And I mean, I would have loved to do an album with even more songs, but it seems like the whole album thing has died out a little bit. Like it's more singles and EPs at the moment, so yeah. Yeah, totally. So, this isn't your first time in Stockholm now? No, no, it's not my first time. I'm like, it's my second home, you could say, because my dad was Swedish. So, I've been here like all my childhood, um, visiting here, and I have family here, my brother and my sisters and their children in Solna. So, I, I go here quite often. And um, is there any specific reason you're visiting here? Is it for family or is it for recording or is it any specific reason? Uh, it's also for visiting family, of course, but I have, I've had a couple of meetings here today uh, with Pledge Music, their office, and some labels uh, about my upcoming EP. Uh, so about doing a license deal, because obviously I've recorded everything myself and I own the master and... And, and made it myself, you know, financially and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for labels to, yeah, to get it out there and to do a license deal. Yeah. So. Okay, so going back to Eurovision, um, you or Lucy Jones was, like, in the end, one of the favorites to win the contest. Mm -hmm. How did that feel like? How did it feel to have, like, the hype of maybe winning once again, technically? You know? uh, I mean, it felt really good because in the beginning we were... I think in like 17, 18, something like that. And then while we were in Kiev, it was top 10, and then it was seven, and then we were in top five. And we all thought, oh, this is maybe gonna happen, uh, that we're going to win. Um, but then I think on the night, it was just, you know, um, Salvador Sobral, I think everyone knew that week that he was going to win. I felt that when I was there at the arena, everyone was just quiet when he started singing. And yeah, there was probably just some other songs that were a bit stronger, but I think top 15 is still good. And I think the UK was really happy because yeah. usually they're not doing that well. Usually they're like the very last. So yeah, I think no. they were pretty happy. And yeah. she did an amazing performance. Really, really good. Hey, it's a good, it's a good uh, position. Cause, like mm. since 2009, it's the best spot. I'm yeah, certain. yeah, I read that too. Mm. So, um, do you?
do you have any plans on ever returning to Eurovision as a songwriter or an artist? Uh, maybe as a songwriter, that could happen. I think it's fun to still be part of the competition in that way, but you're more in the background and it's not as much pressure. But I would never participate as an artist. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel it's like repeating yourself and it's like it could only go downhill from then when you won the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I'm a bad loser, so I don't like losing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how many people will be a second Johnny Logan winning twice. Yeah, I know he... Yeah, three times, I guess, because he's been a writer, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone said it was a Rainmaker song, and it's the year after, oh, you should have participated, you would have won. And maybe that's true. I, I feel like it's a really strong song, actually. I feel like it's almost stronger than only Teardrops, actually. But, yeah, I just felt like, no, it's too risky. And now I want to do other things, so... Yeah, there's there's more in the world than Eurovision in the music industry. Yeah, I mean, but it, I think it was a really good start for me um, to get into the business, and I think I've learned so much these last four years. It's been like a school, you could say, of being a singer and writer and being in, in this crazy business. So it was a good start, but I feel like I want to try other things now. So, um, what do you think about the like the evolution of uh, Dance Melody Grand Prix? Like about um, how the maybe the music styles has changed about mm -hmm. Anyanese and etc. Uh, I think it's it's really good. I mean, I think it's more modern now. Like it had a really bad reputation in the 80s. Um, yeah, I think it's you see more and more serious artists who actually compete in Melody Grand Prix and um, I love Anya I mean I I wrote her song the year before when she came second in Melody Grand Prix and she's an amazing singer Whitney Houston almost she has a great voice um, mm. and uh, do you follow the Swedish Melody Festival then? sometimes um, I mean it goes on and on forever I mean it's great you have lots of shows in Denmark we only have one night I wish actually it was like Sweden, because you have is it ten weeks that's going on. Uh, six weeks. Okay, six weeks. Yeah. Um, I think it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I do that from time to time. You may be adding a few semifinals, like two semifinals at least, to the Grand yeah, Prix, one. so you could have more like um, so you could have more um, like you could have maybe twenty artists from the beginning and then filter out it to a bigger final. You know. Yeah. Now we just have ten. Mm. Okay, so you have won Eurovision. That must be like a dream come true, maybe. I don't know. Depends. But I yeah. mean, um, what are your dreams now? Yeah, I mean, it was a big dream for me as a kid. I I always watched the show and remember when the Olsen brothers won when I was like seven years old. So it is like a childhood dream. Uh, I think for me, it's just to to keep on creating music but to be more in charge which I am now and music that I'm more true to my heart because I experience a lot of times that people write oh like what are you doing now and I mean people haven't heard my new stuff but even you know some of the other stuff I released like a couple of years ago and now when my hair is dark people are like oh but what you did was more true back then but it wasn't actually because I was so young and I didn't have time to find out what kind of artist do I want to be and how should my debut album be like. There was no time at all because it just happened so fast and I won the Dance Music Grand Prix and was a favorite from the start to win the Eurovision and other people around me decided, oh, we should do an album really fast and write it like in a month and I was in all the writing sessions and I think we made a really great album compared to how little time we actually had. Um, but it was all very like stressful time um, and people around me deciding a lot of things and maybe things I, I didn't always want it to be like that so but that's when people saw me first so they think that's the true Emily but it's not compared to I think the stuff we hear the stuff people will hear me release now it's more true to my heart and that's the kind of stuff I, w I want to to do and to be more in charge
Absolutely, I totally get what you mean there. Mm. So, to um, finish off um, with a few more questions, um, tell me about your interests. What do you do besides music? Ooh, um, besides music, uh, I love films. I'm a film geek, um, and I love even you know watching everything behind when they shoot. And, and I've been taking some acting lessons because I'm, you know, I love acting, especially you know films and stuff. And uh, I have different favorite. Like I love you know Coen Brothers, and I just watched all seasons of Fargo, and there's so many great. TV shows out there, it seems like that's where really interesting stuff are happening, where before it was just films, and now there's so much great stuff on, on TV, and um, yeah, so I love that, I've um, been watching Scum as well, Oh yes. yeah, it's so popular in Denmark, I mean, really, really great, uh, it really moved me, I was like, first, wait, what is this, and, and those kids from, like, high school, and, but it, it really, it moved me so much um, so I love film and uh, I love animals as well I've been vegetarian since I was 13 years old and um, uh, what else I love history and archaeology actually I wanted to be like a female Indiana Jones kind of if I hadn't been you know singing and writing so um, like that as well mm. um. and I'm a foodie I love great food Food is great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you? F- what are you focusing on more? Like in general, you would say, like not maybe right now because we know you are making the EP, but um, about um, do you focus more in general about composing or performing as an artist? I mean, of course, the last couple of years it has been more about writing to find my own sound. But when I release my EP. Uh, I want to go out there, you know, and play my new stuff and play gigs with my band, and um, I'm really looking forward to that because I love working in the studio, I love writing, but if I had to pick, being on stage and performing is probably my favorite thing to perform live and and touring. I think that's so much fun. It's also hard work, but it's fun. Yeah, and it must be worth it to see like people that come to you to see like your your. To listen to your songs, to see yeah. you live, and all that stuff. And they know your songs, and it's really, really amazing. Actually. Yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. And um, well, this has been Daniel from OGA Sweden. Thank you guys for watching, and um, bye. Thank you so